should we expand the NCAA tournament? Because I also think this is one of those things. I, I don't know how big you can make this tournament. I don't know if, if because at some point you are going to devalue the conference championships and the, the conference basketball tournaments, which I think are so important to fan bases. I think when you look at the Big 12 basketball championships, I think when you look at the Big 10 has been so bad in basketball for so long. And it just feels like they're not relevant. Mm -hmm. But I look at the SEC, the ACC, and the Big 12. Those are three really good brands. It's one of the reasons we're going to miss the Pac-12 because the Pac-12 basketball tournament was a lot of fun. I've been to several, and they are a that was a good time. Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting when you look at you know ways you could expand the tournament. I, I'm not sure that it necessarily needs expanding, but I think from a revenue standpoint and from you know, just a growth standpoint, it's going to get expanded. And I think the only question remains, is it, is it going to be a thing where you, you just, you know, find a way to keep it at round numbers and add another 20, 30 teams and we just extend it a week or, or can yeah. we get into a place where maybe, you know, and again, this would be, this would be a lot of evolving, but I think, you know, I look at that tournament and I say, dude, you've got enough teams to stretch this thing out over most of the season if you wanted to. I mean, you could you could have a situation if you wanted to where where you could be playing the first and second round of the tournament. You could spread all those games out over the course of the season. That way you still have March Madness, but we have that build up to it. And I think those are the kind of things where it's like, okay, I might be interested in that. It could be cool to have Hey, this is this is this is a tournament game in in you know in April or whatever in February that you know matters in terms of are you going to play in March? I think that could be a really interesting proposition. I think some of the issues in expanding the NCAA tournament, and I think just about everybody recognizes you've got a contract through 2032. That's going to be a huge hurdle. But the other issue is. 27 of the 64 are automatic qualifiers. Mm -hmm. And who usually gets those automatic qualifiers? Yeah, Jimmy's Taco Shop Institute of Hard Taco Shell Fryers. <laughs> it's those lower tier Cinderella, Davidson, your mom's knitting circle university that right. gets those 27 AQs, most of them, right? So can you cut that number? Can you? I don't know. Are you going to have half of the tournament get in on automatic qualifiers? I think that would be very difficult to do. Yeah. I think you've got to find an economical way of creating more games at more venues that unquestionably benefits the sport. So more Cinderella stories are going to have to have access to the tournament. And it can't just be a thing where you're expanding the NCAA tournament so the bottom half of the Big Ten gets in. That can't be why you expand the, the NCAA tournament because basketball is very different than football, right? Basketball, church ball matters in basketball, right? AAU makes NCAA tournament ready players. Basketball's different. It is much, much deeper. It is much, much more expansive. Right. And the ability and the, the accessibility of basketball is so much more pervasive across the country and now across the globe that the lower level teams can beat your best teams. We see it on a consistent basis in March that, well, Cinderella's got her slipper. Right. Right. Like we see that every year. And the idea that, you know, the San Diego States of the world and the FAUs of the world are playing for national championships is phenomenal. So you can't, if you're going to expand this thing to limit that, you can't expand this thing. Yeah. I think you have to have the ability. If you are going to expand the NCAA tournament and let's not pull any punches, they're going to expand the NCAA tournament. Yeah. There's too much. And, and if we talk about the weakness of Brett Yormark in football, his power in basketball, and he's got legitimate power in basketball. He wants more access for more teams in the Big 12. And I'm I'm down with that. I think this league is deep. I think it is the best league in the country. But the Patriot needs as much access as the Big 12 gets. Right. That's that's what I'm worried about. 
the WCC, the, the smaller leagues in this country, need more access. If you're going to give the Blue Bloods all of the power in football, you can't limit the little guy in basketball because they actually have the ability to win the whole damn thing. Yeah, it's so different the way, you know, players bounce around in basketball. You know, yeah. the, the, the idea that, you know, hey, one player in your starting five can make that much of a difference for you on your season is is crazy and I, and I think yeah your your football is pretty cut out football is pretty pretty established now you understand who's got access and who doesn't but basketball that's why I think we all love basketball because you never know who's got access you never know who who's going to come out of the woodwork and all of a sudden you know we get we like the 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 K state thing last year right where where you've got them doing locker room dance videos and it was a phenomenon for a week, right? Like, you know, and Coach Tang is is all of a sudden a I'm celebrity. Sorry, did you say Tang? Yeah, Coach Tang uh is a celebrity, right? Like that's the beauty of college basketball. So even for me as someone who I'm not necessarily just man at the edge of my seat you know, waiting for some riveting January college basketball game. That's not really how it works for me. But yeah, as we work into like today's the 15th of February, as we work into March, like, yeah, I, you're obviously going to start paying more attention and bracketology season rolls up on us. We all get involved. And I think that's why for the little guy, it matters so much in basketball to continue to have access. And by the way, we need to keep saying it. This NIL situation is going to have a huge impact on the little guy in basketball. Right? I think it is. Because the big boys have money to go out and get these guys now. The, they can go out and say, hey, we'll pay you more. Come and play for us. We're Duke. We're, you know, we're Kentucky. It just means more. Yeah. Yeah. M money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I was laying in bed last night thinking about all of you. The CAC. Uh, you know, uh, but I was laying in bed last night looking at the 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 top 25 men's pool. And if you look at, at 16 through 25, it's Dayton, Creighton, St. Mary's, BYU, uh, Jake Retzloff in an hour, um, Wisco, Virginia, Kentucky, Indiana State, that's a legitimate Indiana State team, Florida Atlantic, and, and Oklahoma. And I look at Oklahoma and the Big 12. The Big 12's footprints are all over this poll. But you look at the, the depth of the little guy. You look at how legit Marquette is this year in basketball. Mm -hmm. You look at how legit the Big East is in basketball this year. But think about Marquette. Marquette, like it's hilarious that in the modern era of college basketball, Marquette gets thrown into the little guy pile when Marquette used to be a juggernaut. And that's how quickly things can change, you know? Yeah. And and so to me, it's like, dude, if Marquette's playing for a national championship, that's going to be a big deal in college basketball, man. Like, uh, like with all due respect to San Diego State and FAU, like, like if you can get, in terms of the big picture and the health of the sport, if you can get like an old school brand like that, that has a huge fan base just chilling, that's going to be huge for you. But how does that happen? Well, you got to continue to have access. You got to continue to allow these schools to go out and get the talent. And if yeah. you do that, they're going to be there. Yeah, and I, I think when I look at when I look at the the North Carolinas of the world, Armando Baycott's not getting in the transfer portal. No, right? Like you're you're not. It it it's a di college basketball is different. I'm telling you, you cannot you cannot cut off the little guy. Yeah, you can't do it. It, it basketball, I think, is a very is a very different thing. By the way, one thing real quick. Um, Caitlin Clark tonight yeah. is going up against, I believe, Michigan uh, to break the all-time career scoring record. Ticket sales are through the roof. Pricing is through the roof. We're talking about, I, I, I think Scott Van Pelt last tonight had a segment where $8,000 tickets to a women's college basketball game. Yeah. Eight, I said eight thousand dollars. Oh, I thought we were talking about the Super Bowl. Eight, it's wild. And I will sit here every single day on this show, and I will tell you every single day on this show, Caitlin Clark is vitally important to women's sports in this country and the empowerment Best. of ten-year-old women in this country, ten-year-old girls in this country. 
to play basketball and believe that they can play basketball and believe that they can matter. If you are a father of daughters, make them watch Caitlin Clark tonight. I, I, I am begging you, make them watch Caitlin Clark tonight because it is something that you're not going to see often. Yeah. And when you look at exactly what we are, what we are in store for with this record and this moment, and we start to see the emergence of the women's game, and and you start to understand that somebody like Caitlin Clark and the money that she makes can power your daughter to a, a life of confidence and success. Make your daughters watch this game tonight. Make them understand. Hey, you know, I know that even if they're not sports fans, hey, I know that you don't you don't watch women's college basketball, but look at the passion and the power that's in this arena tonight. Think about that. It's a women's college basketball game, and Carver Hawkeye is going to be lit. It is going to be packed. It is there are going to be celebrities there. It is going to be loud. It is going to be raucous. It is going to be celebratory. And I hope that you will bring your daughters to the TV screen. Because I think it it is a moment that could have significant impact on their lives. Yeah, We rarely get to see, especially at the college level, we rarely get to see a female be the talk of the sports world. We rarely get to see a female be a role model at this level that we are going to see tonight in, in Iowa City. And I think it's critically important. And I don't care if you're a basketball fan. It is a historical moment. And I really hope, I really, really hope that you will bring your daughters to the television. Yeah. Because it is it is massive. It is absolutely massive. Uh, don't forget to download the Prize Picks app, prizepicks.com. Download the yeah. app and win yeah. like money. Yeah. That's every day. Yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner last night. Screw you, Alex Caruso. And he had four rebounds. He got two. But your boy took home two or three because yeah. Victor Wambin, your mama, yeah. gave me two three-pointers. Cha-ching. And then, of course, the soon-to-be NBA MVP, Donovan, Donnie, New York Knickerbocker to be Mitchell, yeah. came through with a huge night again. Yeah. Battled through, almost lost to my beloved Chicago Bulls. Yeah, good thing almost doesn't count. Yeah, he almost went to Chicago and died. Chicago. Uh, but Donnie came through as well. Uh, won myself $34 last night on prize picks. Life is good. Yeah. Life is good. It's fun. It's enjoyable. Spring training is open. Uh, a month from today, I will be in Scottsdale, Arizona. I will be... It's spring training for the Chicago Cubs. The Chicago Cubs, man. I cannot wait. Yeah. I absolutely cannot wait to play baseball, prize picks. It's amazing. Download the app. Use the promo code Monty. And hey, hit me up on, well, I don't really look at Twitter very much anymore as we're about to talk about. Uh, <laughs> but hit me up on Twitter. Uh, DM me on Instagram. Let's share picks. Yeah. Uh, become a member of the show. Uh, we talk about prize picks pretty much every day in our members only uh, Instagram group. Uh, which if you hit the join button right now, 10 bucks a month gets your comments highlighted and read on the show. And you get into our members only Instagram group. It's a great community. Unfortunately, OG Gary's in that group. So it, there is the stench of <laughs> your favorite 50, 50 college teams. Cause Gary's got like 65 college teams. Yeah. So he talks about every one of his 107 favorite college teams now that he's a fan of to make sure he's a fan of everybody who wins. Um, you know, it is what it is. Hit the join button, join the membership and download the prize picks app. Use the promo code Monty to get a hundred percent deposit matching at prizepicks.com. Shout out to Sean Rollins who gives the Monty show membership. Appreciate you, Sean. Thank you so much go, for growing the community. Edward Wayner, like number 27. Y'all need to wake up and hit the like button. Support the YouTube yahoos. Yeah. Uh, yes, please do. 
Um, we've had 500 something people watch a show, 32 likes. Come on, hit the like button, man. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Helps program grow. Let's do it. 115 people watching the show and only 32 likes. Come on. We can be better than that. Program. Boyd Lake, what's up with you? How are things? Uh, Steve Stepanek, the big 12 produces the best quarterbacks that are in the NFL here of late. They have Patrick Mahomes in Texas tech. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah. I mean, the NFL draft belongs to the SEC. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yeah. Um, you look at. I mean, there have been some good Big 12 quarterbacks. I oh, mean, certainly. You know, Kyler Murray is really sensational. L you know? Little Kyler. Little Kyler. Uh, you look at Brocktober, Iowa State product. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, the Big 12 puts quality players in the, in the NFL. But I think when you look at the. You look at the overwhelming majority um of talent that comes out of the sec if you're the best player in the sec you're going in the draft yeah right and i mean if you're if you're not even the best player in the the sec you're going in the draft i mean i i think i look at you know caleb williams well he was at oklahoma before he was at usc so i guess the big 12 gets a bite out of that apple right right you're gonna get drake may out of the sec you're gonna get michael big Penix energy out of the Pac-12. Jalen Hurts. Jalen, well, yeah, but those are guys of yesteryear. I'm talking about this year's draft. Try to keep up, Jake. Mm. Uh, but if you look at the the names that are going to go at the top of this list, yeah, there's going to be a nice spread. Guys like Dallas Turner from Alabama, you, you, you're absolutely right. So I think the Big 12 does fine in the draft. It does. Uh, Dakota Tubbs, good morning. Texas ruined the Big 12. From the... <laughs> You just choose violence every day. Every day. Missouri is um, one of the best schools um, ever invented. Monty, the local kids are going to stay. Ma, ma, hey, Monty. You know? <laughs> Monty. Uh, from the very outset of the 90s, the Longhorn Network was the biggest mistake the old Big 12 could have allowed to happen. Everybody was getting a network. Everybody was getting a network. If you're Texas, why wouldn't you want the long the Longhorn Network? Yeah. Now, if you if you look at the way the game has changed, sure. But didn't BYU lead the industry in tier two and three rights? Didn't BYU TV become the model for what people were doing? I think it absolutely did. I I don't think I don't think there is any chance that you can make, in my opinion, a compelling argument that. Texas ruined the Big 12. Yeah, I think Texas was the Big 12, man. Texas was the face of the Big 12 for years. Like, you were the team in that conference for a really long time. And because of that, you got certain opportunities. Like, it, it is I what also, it is. But I also look at the, I also look at the universities who have left. I mean, has Texas A&M thrived in the SEC? No. I know Nebraska has won three straight Big Ten. That's a lie. Um, I, I mean, I, I look at Missouri. Um, I look at – you had no business going to the SEC, and you still have no business being in the SEC. Nebraska has no business being in the Big Ten. A&M has no business being in the SEC. Right. Right? Now, Texas – I think Texas is going to thrive in the SEC. Oklahoma, I think Oklahoma has to rebuild their brand because it has been it has been a, a bumpy road of irrelevance for Oklahoma now for, for for at least since Lincoln left. But as Jake likes to point out every day on this show, Lincoln Riley doesn't win big games. Well, and USC wouldn't be in the top cut. I mean, we all we all know that that USC, you know isn't one of those teams. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's USC is you know. not him, right? Exactly. Exactly. USC is not him. Exactly. You know, uh, big daddy magic. Hey, playa. Oh God, here we go. Let me hear. Hold on. Here we big go. daddy right. magic. Right. Heavy here we go. Off the big gun with the sweet tongue. The beloved university of Utah will dominate the big 12 It's going to be the nation of domination for the next decade. This is your beloved. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Gerard Jones, OSU Michigan has to be on Thanksgiving weekend. I agree with that. You're not, listen, You got, it doesn't matter what the Big Ten does. You're not digging with o Ohio State and Michigan. No. You're, that is, that is, 
I mean, that is the the biggest. That Every is the year, dude. That it, it, as it should be. Yes, they've earned that right. Now I'm hoping that we can somehow, some way, and I know we're not set up for this. And I, and, and listen, you guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna use, and I I hesitate to do. Careful it. now, careful. I hesitate to do it. I'm gonna use common sense. What? I know, dude. Dude, I shouldn't. That's bullshit. At some point, I I would love for us to get back to back weeks of Ohio State and Michigan, which is currently impossible because they're in the same division. Right. Which can we can we can we fix like the fact that we had to endure endure the fact that we had to endure. Iowa. I, come on, man. <laughs> because but, it's garbage. And now I under expansion and your mom, like I totally get it. But Monty, Iowa hey, Monty. would be in the top cut. Ma, ma, Monty, they, they were seven and two, Monty. We earned it. <laughs> yeah, granted, <laughs> we, I mean, the Hawks didn't put any offense on the field. And all we did was really, our offense that game consisted of some linemen and a punter. Yeah, I know yeah. what time it is. But who doesn't like to control field position? That's yeah, Monty, we it's a doing. special teams clinic. You know, we just never had a chance to run that fake. So we did Iowa gain an offensive yard in that game? Monty. Um anyway. I know it's crazy talk. Yeah. I, I know that I should just shut my mouth and it'd be nice to see Ohio State and Michigan compete for a Big Ten championship. Right. That's all I want. It's I, and again, it's common sense. I get it, uh, Patrick. Yes, the Big Twelve can survive as a tier two conference. Okay, <laughs> Jimmy Ottson. I can't even remember what Jimmy Ottson said in the comment section yesterday, Jimmy. but I was like, James, it's so good to see you in the YouTube <coughs> comment section. <coughs> it, it, it's I said sex tin. Yeah, it's early. You know. Uh, let's see. Edward Wayner. Will the SEC allegedly going to nine game football schedule in 26? Will ESPN extend the ACC TV deal, TV deal until 2036? Oh my God. If they extend the ACC deal again, a Florida state's going to have a hysterectomy <laughs> and an aneurysm, <laughs> right? Like they're, they, they will, bro. I believe they will begin bleeding from the ears. Dude. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. Oh, yeah. Breaking news. The ACC, uh, you know, they uh, extended their contract with ESPN until 2050. Wow. The ACC. <laughs> no. Uh, deal until 2036. SEC supposedly will have to pay three to five million per SEC team for the ninth game. Uh, I don't think it matters. I think I think the 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 thing that matters is the SEC and the Big Ten Alliance. And how that drives, I think the ACC is irrelevant. Yeah. I, Ohio State fan, I know, I know, rock chalk seminal, we get it. Right. Um, I understand that you're you already crowned Clemson and Dabo doesn't use the portal. Right. I understand. In God's yeah. Name, listen, image, and likeness. Listen, Duke football is coming. Oh, Duke is Duke. Duke football's coming. And Riley Leonard's and, not. And it's 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 Louie. We get it. The ACC is irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, it, but honest Monty, to God. Louisville. Yeah, Louisville. I, I, listen, I remember Bro, Lamar Bro. wearing that red satin jacket uh, and said <laughs> nobody ever <laughs> because nobody cares about ACC football. No. I mean, I, I understand that. I'll stop. You get my point. The SEC, three to five million dollars. I, I, honest to goodness, I believe they burn that every day to start fires. They kindle that much money. Like they're going to schedule correctly. Greg Sankey is a very, very good businessman. Yeah. And he is going to schedule those ninth games to matter. You bet your bottom dollar. And again, it's why the Pac 12 is dead and George Klyovkov's getting terminated. Because you didn't understand. That schedule matters, you pricks. I don't really get it. Right? Like, well, you know, we got to find somebody to play on Friday night in cold weather and snow and, and you know, in, in you know, Texar, Spokane. Bodix is playing well. So you sent USC? 
multiple times to play in cold weather on a Friday night and a late kickoff with your lawyer and running the instant <coughs> replay room. I will never forget that dude. Assholes. Holy like, cow. do you guys understand that the pack? No, I'm not. No, 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 George, no, Georgie no. Pooh. I'm not going down your rabbit hole. I would all due respect, which is not a euphemism for anything. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, John. Try. Good to see you. Uh, Stepanek. I remember when they said West Virginia would dominate the big 12 when they joined Utah will be good. They won't dominate the big 12. It's one man's opinion, right? Is another man's treasure. I think that (laughs) if Utah doesn't dominate the big 12 this year, I'd be shocked. Right. That program is locked and loaded every year. Their line play in the trenches is second to nobody. Yes, It, it is. And it's, it's the same. They they they're the Chicago Bears. They never have a quarterback. They always have defense. Correct. And I at some point that's got to change. OG Gary breaking ACC extends uh, deal until twenty eighty nine with one year option add on to potentially bring the deal to twenty ninety. Each school gets paid three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> breaking news: FSU leaves the ACC to form its own country in Texas. <laughs> That's amazing. Gary, how would that make you feel as a Florida State fan? You I'm know, curious. Would that, would that be tough? Or? But more more so, how would that make you feel as a Boston College fan? Because that's... Yeah, Bill O'Brien's been a you know a sensational hire for you guys so far. Dakota, if Missouri <laughs> doesn't belong in the SEC... Oh, boy, here we go. Okay, hold on. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, Monty! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Monty. If Missouri doesn't belong in the SEC, then Tennessee doesn't either. So now it's about another school. <laughs> Mom, I dumped, I took a dump in my pants. Why'd you do that? Because Trevor did too. Uh, if if we, hey, Monty, if we want to, t- <laughs> if we want to talk about on-field results, Missouri has more ten-win seasons. Listen, listen, Monty, that's not fair. Our field goal kicker has 10-inch spikes in. Find me another team that's got a field goal kicker with 10-inch spikes, let alone 10-inch cocks. <laughs> I mean, how many universities have a kicking room where everybody wears 10-inch spikes? Nobody but Missouri. We belong Yay. in the SEC, right? Uh, 10 win seasons and been to more conference championships than the balls. Okay. I mean, listen. Well- the balls jumped <laughs> off that cliff. We deserve to jump off the cliff too. Right? I mean, if if you look at what Wachahatchee Sweater Knitter University did, we've got more wins than they do. I doubt that. I'm sorry, did you just and all mining voice aside, okay? <laughs> did did you just compare yourself to Tennessee? Um um, did you just, do you, you just said that Missouri should be compared to Rocky top, you know, Quinn Snyder thinks that's a dumb comparison. You ten- not about Tennessee, dude. Dakota. <laughs> 